Hi, welcome to this presentation on the ACE Creditor System. The purpose of this Creditor System is to help you track all your outstanding to your suppliers and to provide the aging of such uh, debts in terms of 3 days, 60 days and so on. Now this is the password input screen. First you enter the name of your user. The user with the most rights to the entire system is named admin and there's a spa special password given to this admin so let's enter the password now the person admin can create many other users with each with their own individual password and each person can be assigned to access different parts of the uh, system in other words you can prevent certain people from going to certain parts like printing reports and so on by way of the user's name and password now click on OK and next the system will pick up the current date of your system and you click OK and then you come to the main menu this is the main point where you assess all the various options available under this ACE creditor system so you will notice that on the left hand side there are five main sections the first one is called maintenance under maintenance when you click on it there are various subsections like creation of accounts and so on now maintenance is a section where you can create codes for various accounts which is your suppliers accounts codes for the general ledger link accounts which is like an interfacing accounts between this system and the ACE general ledger system uh, then you have got groups classification you have got uh, budgets or targeted purchases by different groups creation of letters and also uh, foreign exchange currencies uh, rates you can enter here in the maintenance side now the next one is a posting section this is a section where you have various options to post all your suppliers invoices payments to suppliers debit note credit notes and so on now the posting can be online or batch which we will explain later now we also have an inquiry section the inquiry section is where you can inquire on any particular suppliers account how much is outstanding at any certain point in time and then we have all the various reports under the report section so these are all the reports that can be printed from the creditors system and the last one is called the other section this is the section where we set up configuration for your ACE credit system how does it run uh, what sort of um, facilities do you need inside here and creation of uh, for example additional users and their passwords and which part of the program that they can access and the last button is for exit where you exit the entire system once you have finished using the credit system Now let's go into the first section which is the maintenance section the first button is creation of accounts this allows you to create new suppliers accounts so there are two sub options here one is to maintain the account and one is to do an import and export so let's do the first button first which is maintain accounts now this is where you can create the new account numbers for your suppliers for a new supplier so let's say your suppliers account number is k001 enter the account number enter the name of the supplier now there are three lines each line has got 30 characters then you can enter the address now there are four lines for address you can enter the person to contact the telephone number of that person the company your supplier the fax number the mobile phone number if you have mobile phone number and email address where you can actually send out certain documents in email form to this particular company and you can assign this particular account to any particular groups in other words you can classify them as different groups different types of suppliers and we'll teach you how to set up different types of suppliers after this so for example in this case we have got two classification regular suppliers or ad hoc so let's say this particular one is an ad hoc supplier you can also have territory codes you can divide them into different territories the purpose of having these groups and territory is for you is to allow you to analyze your purchases by these different groups of suppliers or different 
areas where do you get your supplies from now if this is a foreign currency account which means that you buy uh, things from this particular supplier from overseas then you can actually create a foreign currency account here so if you were to assign any one of these particular foreign currency like in this case Singapore dollars for example that means all the amount that is uh, purchases from this particular supplier is accounted in Singapore dollars but you have to convert them into your local currency now what is the credit limit that they provide to you you can enter the amount and what is their usual terms of payment in terms of days the next one is whether every month you want to print a ledger for your checking purposes if yes take this and also whether the ledger will print out all details of outstanding invoices or unmatched payments which is what we call open item or it is based on balance brought forward in other words every month there is a balance brought forward and only shows the current month's transactions now if you want to show an open item ledger you click this okay and once you have completed that you click on the add button and the new account is added now for any existing account if you want to change something there is a pop-up button here you click on this and you can choose which particular account and you can see all the details will come out this is where you can click on whichever field it is to change and then you can add them up and after that you can just save up so this is how you change any existing account as well and do a save button and that's how you do your maintenance for individual suppliers now the next step option under accounts here is called import export account now the purpose of this function is like for example if you have got an independent server where you store all your main creditors account your suppliers accounts and you have another PC which is not connected by any network cable and you want to export all the information of the suppliers into a file and put it onto another PC for whatever purpose maybe you have another subsystem somewhere there where you want to do some work to print out maybe uh, ledgers or things like that then you can actually do this use this import or export function export meaning you push out into a media let's say we will choose this by range of dates and we do an export right you will give you a list of all the exported function and then you can choose whether is uh, export is by way of disk by a network if it's connected to a LAN a local area network or by email accounts or even directly to a modem so you can actually export the details to a thumb drive for example and on the other side we will do a import function so in this way you can actually uh, align the creditors account in one system to another PC of course for the other PC to operate and be able to accept all these supplies account you will need to have a set of the ACE creditor system in the other PC as well now next let's look at the maintenance of GL link accounts GL link accounts are actually interfacing accounts accounts is between this ACE credit system and the ACE general ledger system now the entries for the general ledger as you are doing postings and transactions into this ACE credit system are parked here for onward transmission to the ACE general ledger system so inside here there are a couple of sections they have got system bank purchases return and others so let's look at what's available under system now you can see here these are the entries that affect your creditors control account in your age general ledger system plus other things like bank commission loss and gain of exchange and so on now the usual section that usually will change will be under purchases where you can classify your own type of purchases depending on nature of a business so for example you may have purchase of product one two groups and these are groups not individual product because these are like groupings if you've got many gro uh, products that you buy for example from suppliers under one particular group you probably classify them as purchases of these group of materials like raw materials or finished goods and so on see so this is where you can classify not by individual product the individual product will be under the stock system so you may create some so let's say if you are doing something like that they will ask you the name of this particular general ledger link and also if you were to link this and transfer this which is a GL ACE general ledger account now this is interface link direct to the ACE general ledger if you have the ACE general ledger system you can actually straight away uh, bring up from here for example purchases account could be this one and under one department you can actually do this and then you can do a setup uh, whether this is directly linked if you tick this way directly link it means that any entry 
that comes into this general ledger link account, which is meant for onward transmission to the ACE general ledger system, will be directly posted by this system straight into the ACE general ledger system. So this link is optional. If you do not link this, then once a month, our advice would be for you to transfer this batch entries for the entire month, all the entries, the totals that is affecting the general ledger system from the age credit system to be transferred. So this general ledger account number will ensure that the link is transferred to the correct account over there. So once you have done that, you can do a save and that's how you create the general ledger link maintenance account. Next, we have maintenance of groups. Now, what are groups maintenance? The purpose of this classification is to allow you to create as many groups as you want to identify the type of supplier. So let's say if you want to analyze your purchases, for example, by different groups. Like in this example, we have ad hoc and regular suppliers. Let's say if you want something like you want to know how many are overseas, how much of uh, purchases do you buy from overseas? You can create something new, which is called, let's say, overseas. Now, there are six codes maximum to identify the code. So let's say this is overseas and this is the code you're using. Then you can call these. These are overseas suppliers, for example. Now, by adding this particular classification in, under the individual supplier account, we remember we had a classification where you can assign to each supplier. So you can assign which supplier belongs to overseas. So in this way, whenever you do transaction with those individual accounts, those balances will be accrued by this type of group. Uh, classification so in that sense you can analyze your purchases by the different types of supplies that you have so this is for the purpose of analyzing your purchases now the maintenance of budget or targeted purchases is meant for setting by various group for example let's say ad hoc suppliers depending on how you classify what is your estimated purchases from these people for example on a per month basis so you can enter these targeted purchases on a month-to-month -month basis, you can change individual one. The purpose of this is to analyze uh, that this was the targeted purchases and whether as, a, as you go, as your business goes along the financial year, did you, in the end, there will be a report that shows you whether your total purchases by these individual groups exceeded the budgets or your targets that you set or not. So you can add this up. So this will be shown, for example, in this report. Let's go very quickly to this report under group analysis. If you were to preview, you can see this report will show you your purchases against your budgeted uh, purchases on a per month and per year basis. So the purpose of that is for this particular report. Next, we have letters. This is where you can create all sorts of letters, documents that you want to send out, for example, to your suppliers. Maybe it could be uh, some news or some sort of letter. You can actually do this, anything for any purpose. You can create, for example, notice Let's say we not call it notice one. This will be like a new file. And then inside here, it's just a blank place of paper for you. Let's say if I were to send a notice to my suppliers, I would say, for example, uh, first I have my supplier's account number, for example. And then at that point, I want the account number. You can put account number. Now the system will extract the account numbers as it start printing for individual suppliers. Maybe I would like to have the name of the suppliers over here. So I right click. And I have a name, maybe I want a name and as line one. And if you want, for example, the next line, even with the addresses, okay, you can actually do this line one, two, three, four, you can put address and so on. So this is how it's uh, it's where the, the system will do a sort of a mail merge and extract information. So this could be, for example, dear supplier, uh, we wish to inform and so on, right? And then you save. This particular letter up now you can use this later on for example to send something so depending on how you use this it is a free typing tool for you to create letters that you usually send to your suppliers that's how you can do this now the next one is maintenance of currency table if you are dealing with foreign currency where you buy products from overseas you have to key in, for example one singapore dollars is equivalent to how much what is your exchange rate to your local currency so you can do this. If let's say uh, your rate has changed 2.65, for example, Singapore dollars, you do a save. So here you would create all your individual exchange rates that you use in your ACE creditor system.
Now next, let's go on to the next main section, which is the posting section. Under this section, you have options for you to post all the transactions, all your dealings with your suppliers, such as invoices, payments, debit and credit notes, debit and credit adjustment journals. Now this posting can be online. Online meaning that when you post, it is immediately updated to the account and it becomes an actual transaction. Or it can be on a batch basis, meaning you can post it first as it's stored in a temporary file. Then you can edit and list out whatever you've posted, counter check before you do a update on a batch. Now both online and batch postings is exactly the same, except that the way it works is one is stored offline first for you to do, allow to check. So let's look at the invoice posting. For example, you receive uh, invoices from the suppliers. You post inside here. Now under this option, you can actually print a posting document. A document meaning like for each particular posting, we actually print out a kind of a of a, a document that reflects like your purchase invoice or it can be a journal. So usually we will advise you to use journal because this is like an audit list to check back what you have posted. So you click on that. Now this is the actual transaction screen. First you enter your account number. For example, let's say we have an account number created earlier. It's an invoice. What is your supplier's invoice number? And what is the date? Uh, which group did it belong to in case this invoice or those defaulted was belonging to an ad hoc group but if for this for whatever reason it belongs to some other group you can actually do a pull down here and change so let's say it is also still as ad hoc what is the term given for this particular invoice and what is the there are two detail line for you to enter some details about what do you actually purchase so you can do for example purchase raw mat and what is the amount? Now this is a foreign currency account because we have set it earlier to a Singapore dollar. So what is the foreign currency amount that they bill? For example, they bill 1,000 Singapore dollars. You will enter this. And what is this purchase about? So you can say, for example, if you are buying analyzing, this is purchase raw man. Now this analysis here is for the purpose of the general ledger link accounts. So from here, wherever you chose, this would be the corresponding entries that will be transferred to the general ledger, either directly linked as depending on your setting as shown earlier in the maintenance or as a batch total for be transferred at the end of the month. And you click on the post and the entry goes in. So this is how you post your invoices. So let's see if you have next account number and if you cannot remember the account number, you can actually do a click on the pop up here and you can do a search. Let's say this is another invoice. This happens with invoice number and what is the amount detail for example let's say components purchases how much do you buy five thousand uh, what do you purchase from maybe just for example raw mat here right click post now at the end of the posting when you do a close the system do a comparison between your batch uh, value and your actual poster. Now you can actually make use of batch value. Batch value is kind of like a number that you key in first before you start posting for you to do some comparison. You can use that or you don't use it, it will still show you a total. So if you want to print a journal, you can click a journal at this point in time and assist, choose whichever printer and the system will print out a journal for you. Okay, uh, to show a summary of all your posting, either that or you can close. Now let's look at the payment posting option. Same thing, you can choose journal or you can actually print a posting document. If you print a posting document, an actual payment voucher will be uh, printed into the system. So let's click this, enter the account number, payment. Uh, what is your voucher number? If it's not automated, then you can actually have an automated payment voucher if you choose document. So date and uh, what is your check number, for example? How much are you paying? Now I have purposely changed the exchange rate. You can see here earlier when we post it was 2.65, I think. So right now, let's say we are paying a Singapore dollars 1,000, which means there's some difference in exchange rate because in the actual ringgit in the local currency, it is actually 2006. <clears throat> so there will be a gain or loss. We will show you later on how we actually account for the gain or the loss. So pay his name, which bank code, which bank are you coming out from payment for? For example, if you have multiple banks, and which invoice are you paying? Now, the invoice you're paying can have uh, three types. One is auto, which means the system always choose the oldest bill to pay. So this is called auto match. Or it can be manual. If there are multiple invoices for this account, whereby you can choose which 
bill you want to pay this account for not necessarily the oldest one or if you're not sure this payment is for what because there's some dispute you can put it as an open credit in other words this particular payment is just parked in there as a credit for this particular account and it's an additional payment available for matching in the future so the usual one of course the easiest is actually to use auto and if you click post so that particular bill is settled now as i mentioned there is an auto gain or loss here we will show you later on how do we do that so this is how you do posting of a payment so let's see if i would do it for the next account same thing how much do i pay if this is not a foreign currency account for example which is my bank uh, how much am i paying if i'm paying for example one thousand dollars and i want to do a this is issued to which but bank and uh, i will do a manual which means i want to pay this bill and not the other one let's say or i can pay this is 500 i'm paying and i'm paying the other 500 here to another bill let's say making out the complete 1000 that's how i get all and i can do a post and that's how i can do a manual match against individual invoices and of it you can print a journal okay or you can close Now the posting for the rest like debit notes, suppliers, debit notes and credit notes are pretty the same. Inside here, in fact, you can choose, you can see here, you can have suppliers, credit notes, suppliers, debit notes, debit journal. Journals are meant for adjustments. They do not affect your purchase analysis. That means if you have some reports, like for example, we have spoken earlier under groups, you will have analysis of total purchases, then journals does not affect those analysis of total. So journal is more for adjustment. The debit and credit notes will affect the reduction or increase of purchases analysis as well so this is pretty the same you can actually choose for example if i want to post a supplier credit note and which supplier is that if i have uh, say do i have this yes okay what is the credit note number you know what is the details about or overcharge for example some details how much is the credit note did they give me okay and again because it's a credit note you can do a matching because this can be matched against invoice so let's say this was a particular invoice it was auto match you can see yes you can actually click that and the system goes in now let's look at a batch posting batch posting as i mentioned earlier it goes into a batch it's not updated so if i were to use batch posting first same thing except that it does not go into the actual account until i finally confirm so let's say if this is a payment and payment for this particular account uh, under whatever number uh, what is your check number and how much amount that I paid as a amount to the account under which bank is defaulted and then let's say I post because this is open credit reason there are no outstanding bills at this moment in time so I do a post so this is like a batch entry so this entry is, has not gone in and actually uh, debited in this case payment not debited the supplies account yet until later on I can do checking and so on and I find that if there's anything wrong I can do an edit I can call back out the entry and actually can do it oh this entry was wrong it was supposed to be 250 for example you can do this edit and I can post back and can save so this is the advantage of having batch once you've checked two and uh, there is a report for you to check batch posting under report for example transactions you can show later you see this is where you can list out your batch transactions so you can do preview right you can see the posting entries here this is where you check if there's anything wrong you want to correct you go back and you do a posting edit as i showed earlier. then once it's correct you do an update so this is where you update you can choose or which transaction you want to update whether you want to update all or only invoices or payment or credit note you can do that and once you update then only for example i take this or this become an actual entry and you can choose whether you update with journal or not you can tick one tick and then when you do a posting that's when an actual transaction goes in so this is the difference between online and batch posting now the next option available under the posting main section is edit posting now under this edit posting there are a couple of subsections transaction error correction now this is for you to automatically ask the system to reverse any entry that is wrong provided the entry has not been matched 
let's say for example a001 let under invoices you have few invoices which is still active in other words it's not been matched and you find that this invoice is wrong you can just highlight this invoice and you notice here everything is reversed for you so all you do is just click post and that transaction is considered cancelled there is an error correction entry done for you now any entry you made inside the ace credit system you cannot like wrap it off or make it disappear but you can do a transaction error posting in other words there's a corresponding entry which is the opposite which is a negative value to reverse it this is called transaction error automatic transaction error posting however the condition must be that those transaction has not been matched now what happens if you want to error correct some transaction that has been matched you can do this first you rematch it for example let's say under a001 now i have an entry let's say in this case you can see it will show you those entries which are on the payment side or credit note against the uh, purchases all right or invoices so let's see if i would choose one for example this is a payment 500 dollars and you can see there it's already matched it's written here active matched so the amount has been added. so i want to reverse this entry so the first thing you do is i got a minus off the active match the moment i do that you notice at the bottom here the system will know that what was this invoice this this uh, payment match against which invoice you will do a reverse by itself and you do a post so now you have released the matching and then you can come back to transaction error posting to error it under payment you key in the account number and you that particular transaction is now active which means it's been released from its matching and you can do a reversal by itself you notice all the negative values are here by itself and do a post and that's how you do error correction for entries that have already been matched now for those entries that i just did the error correction entries that means there's a wrong entry there's a corresponding error correction entry now this will be printed out in your ledger assuming you don't want them to be printed in ledger you can actually do this mark transaction to hidden so you'll be able to mark for example a one which are the entries that you want to be hidden so usually they will come in pairs that means one is a actual entry one is a corresponding error correction entry you can notice that it's already auto remarked for you so whichever you want to hide you can click it or you can unclick that's how you can do a mark to hide whatever entry that you want and the last one is a foreign gain or loss exchange now just now earlier when we did there was a gain or there's a loss on one of the account which this is affecting foreign currency account now this will only be posted provided that particular invoice is fully settled if it's partially settled the gain and loss and exchange will not be posted until it's fully settled so and you can also choose specific account for example i want to do only for that account k01 you do a posting and the system will automatically seek out any gain or loss for those bills as if it's fully settled and do the entering for the posting and you will inform you how much of the posting has been done so this is how you do automatic gain on foreign exchange now if your company has a policy of issuing post data check you can actually use this post data check option to key in for example which account what is your check number that you have provided for what was the check date what was the date that you have posted it to okay your posting date how much of check did you give and for what purpose you can put in for example which particular invoice were you paying for and so on it's like a remarks line and you add now the purpose of having this is that you're on the ledgers on the individual ledger of each supplier account you can actually list out the posted check so it makes you it, it reminds you what posted check have been issued to each supplier that's the only purpose for this and when the check matures later on you have to do an update you can choose which are the one which are due for up, uh, for clearance and do an update and the system will transfer that as an actual payment otherwise it is like stored in a temporary file as a posted check option so this is called a posted check option Okay, let's move on to the next main section inquiry this is as the term inquiry uh, means you can inquire on any particular account whether in local currency foreign currency or both uh, which is your account number and it shows you all the outstanding for each individual account 
all the details are here uh, with some of the details that you're keen whether you're purchasing components and so on on the top you can see the aging of the debts that you owe to this particular supplier how much is in total for how long 30 days 60 days and so on who is the person to contact telephone number credit limit and so on so this is for inquiring on any particular account you also have a general ledger link inquiry account uh, you can say what sort of purchases, for example, and which link am I talking about, purchase of product. It can show you your total purchases you have done for your postings. You can have a group analysis. For example, what sort of group am I having, ad hoc suppliers, how much have my total purchases. And you can display this information because these are monthly figures in terms of a graph. You can actually have it in graph form. You can choose different graph format. For example, I want a pie chart. You can do this. So this analysis can be printed in this form. And you can, of course, print this. And you can have comparison between different groups. For example, you can specify which groups that you want. Maybe ad hoc and regular suppliers. Okay. And what's the supplies that you have? And you do a confirmation based on year to date or month to date purchases. Pricks it out. And you can do a graph comparison. Again, you can do pie chart, 2D area, for example, 3D line, or you can do a pie chart comparison. How much total purchases from ad hoc suppliers and regular supplies and so on. So these are useful inquiry programs. Or you can have a listing of all your PD checks, for example, under which particular account you can do an inquiry. What are the PD checks available? So these are all the various types of inquiry programs available. Now under the report main section, these are where this is a section where you can print all the reports under the ACE creditor system. The first report we look at is account index. This is a list of account. You can choose it by range of account numbers or by name, depending on how you want to list it. And once it's account number, you can choose range of all or specified, which means that you can choose a particular range. If I do a pop, for example, from here to this particular range, you can actually choose. And whether you want to report this classified by various groups, you can actually do that. And for all reports, let's say we choose all, for all reports, you can do a preview, you can do a print, or you can create a file, sort of like a text file you can import to some other tools. So let's do a preview. This is the format of the account index report. This is a report that shows list of all the suppliers accounts that you have with you, with all their individual details. If you want to print, you do a print, you select which printer, and then you click OK, and the system will just print. The next report is a transaction report. This one has got two options. One is to list out all transactions that's already been updated or those under the batch file. You remember we had earlier a batch posting. You can list under batch. Updated are actual transactions that's already been uh, debited or credited to the individual supplier's account. So you can list this by reference number, by account number, by transaction number. Transaction number is a unique uh, sequence number. Whichever transaction is posted earlier will have an earlier transaction number so this will allow you to print it by sequence of when they were posted you can have a range of account numbers you can select under here all of them has got this pop-up feature you can actually do a pop-up okay or you can choose for all and you can choose to list only for example suppliers invoices only payments debit and credit notes and so on you can choose whether by transaction date the transaction date is the actual date of the transaction based on the documents or based on the posting date and for each one, you can choose the range of date to print. So this is more for auditing purposes when you want to check on certain entries. Or you can say only foreign currency account. Again, you can do a preview or print. So this is how the transaction report looks like. So all the details of every posting is listed here. Name of supplier, balance, how much was the original value, what's the net value, which age group does it belong to, and so on. Let's look at the group purchase analysis report. Again, you can choose range of groups. You can do a preview, for example. 
Now, this will analyze your total purchases by type of suppliers. If you remember that earlier, we had got analysis where you can classify each supplier into which sort of group. This will give you the purchase analysis. Now, you can also do this. Click on print month for year to date, YTD send for year to date, which means you want to see the individual months. You can see here, January, February, so on. It shows you the individual month purchases against the budgeted purchase. Next, let's look at the General Ledger Link Account Report. Now, this is a summary of all General Ledger entries. Through your postings in your ACE credit system, they are supposed to be transferred to the ACE General Ledger entry. Let's look at the preview of the report. Now, this is how the report looks like. You have all the debit and credit entries for every individual account that is affecting, that is supposed to affect your general ledger uh, accounts as well. So you would have like, for example, here, total purchases, the analysis of purchases, the analysis of the bank accounts and so on. Now, let's look at it in detail. If I would click detail and do a report again, you can see the detail of every entry affecting the debit and credit entries are listed here. So you can actually use this to check what is the amount that is affecting the each individual account, right? You can see here. And next, let's look at the age analysis report. This is actually the most important report in the entire age creditor system because this shows a summary of all the accounts all the amount that is outstanding to individual suppliers based on number of days. So that's why they call it an aging report. So again, range of account numbers, whether you want to list it by types of suppliers, which is by groups, whether you want to list only the overdue amount or non-overdue or both, you can see, you can choose. And this is a default. You can print account with uh, how many months outstanding. For example, you only want those which has got 60 days and above, which is say like uh, two months and above. And number of uh, name line to print and so on you can actually choose there are a lot of options here for you to choose let's look at the preview now you can see here the individual details of the suppliers the amount outstanding any open credit that means a payment that has not been matched against any particular invoice and then how long has been the total outstanding in terms of days so if it's just 12 months that you're choosing this will be the second part of the report it can go up to a year now how many months to print is configurable in the system if you only want up to 60 days you can configure this report to print no more than 60 days so anything above 60 days is gathered into the last column you can do that it can, it's configurable in the system now you can have for example uh aging in detail let's say if you do this in detail and do a preview again you can see the report will now show you the invoices that is still outstanding even though it is partially paid they will show you the amount that's actually outstanding how does this total outstanding come about with which invoice so this is a detailed report so this is the aging report which is actually the most important report in the entire age in the entire ace credit system now the purchase analysis report gives you a summary of all uh, purchases by individual suppliers so if you were to do a again of course range of account numbers and so on is choosable let's do a preview you can see they will show you your individual suppliers account how much purchases this month and how much purchases for the entire year and you can say report this by account grouped meaning you can split them up by group so these are ad hoc suppliers all the health supplies are here. If you go on to the next page, these are the regular suppliers and so on. And you can also print month to date for the year to date figures. In other words, print out the individual month purchases, January, February, March and so on. So this is the purchase analysis report. Current ledger prints the ledger for individual account. Again, range of accounts you can choose whether by groups, and there are some other uh, criteria for you to choose whether you want to print outstanding account only, whether you want to print the hidden transaction. Remember earlier we can hide mark some transaction hidden, especially those error correction entries. Whether you're printing a blank form or preprint form, let's have a look at it. 
This is a ledger of one of the accounts. You can see the details are here, the date, details, uh, invoice number, payment number, debit and credit, what's the balance. At the bottom, you will have your aging. How much is the total outstanding in terms of number of days? Now, if I were to say hidden accounts as well, printed, and you can see a preview, then any error correction entry, you notice at the bottom here, the error correction entries will now be shown as well in the current ledger. So this is for printing of ledger individually by each account. Now we have mailing labels. Mailing labels is for you to print out labels like these on computer forms. Let's say, for example, you want to do some labeling. You want to send some things out and you want the name and addresses of the uh, of your suppliers to be printed on computer form with sticky labels. This is what you can do. Print out labels. Of course, you can choose range of accounts to print. Letters. You can choose. Remember, we created an earlier letter. If I were to print it, I can select which account number do I want to print uh, the letter to. You can do specification and then you can actually choose which account and you can actually print the letter whatever letter that you want. You can see the format earlier. Remember we did some changes there. Dear supply and so on. You can see that it's replacing all the account number and the addresses over here, depending on how you construct your letter. Next we have the year ledger. The year ledger is similar to the current ledger, except the current ledger will only print transactions for the current month, which is the outstanding current outstanding. Whereas the year will print the entire ledger of all transactions for each account for the entire year. So this is good for auditing purposes when you want to see the entire year's transactions. So this is a year ledger. Again, you have got criteria for choose range of accounts and so on. Now the overdue analysis, this is an important report. You want to have overdue by when, for example, which date to overdue, what are transactions. This will only list out transactions for each supplier that is really overdue based on their terms or credit limit. Right? If any transaction is not over the limit or not due yet, it will not be listed here. So this report is a is a report to show you which are the bills or invoices from the suppliers that needs to be urgently paid. So only overdue and it shows you the number of days overdue for each individual invoice. So you have an idea of how much uh, money you need to prepare to pay your suppliers. Now transaction 2 report is the same as transaction except that here it shows you the individual matching that is done that means for each invoice if you have been paid we was matched again which payment so you have a detailed analysis of how it was uh, analyzed how was it paid how was the invoice paid against which payment uh, when you were posting the invoices how did you do the general ledger link analysis based on purchases for example you can see the full details on the right hand side here the distribution and how you apply so this is good when you want to check how did you actually match each transaction against which payment? This is called a transaction two report. The documents, you can actually reprint documents, for example, like payment vouchers and so on. If you have chosen the document option during those postings, you are able to release this and reprint the document itself. Now the balance analysis report, you can choose range of accounts. You can see it gives you a shorter form of your ledger. In other words, for each individual suppliers, what is the current ledger, outstanding invoices and payments, and what is the running total? And you can see a balance on the left, on the right hand side here. So this will give you a simple analysis of all accounts, easier for you to check rather than go through every single ledger which is printed on a page by page basis. And the operation audit trail is a report that shows uh, who are the people who did what posting on what day with user's name, document reference on a date and a time that things were done. So this is an audit trail, a trail uh, indicating who did what inside the ACE creditor system. And lastly, we have the PD check listing. This is a listing or report on all the PD checks that is due on any particular date. You can do a checklist by check date or by posting date. You can choose whichever date that you want to have and uh, based on either due date or let's say if you have a due date uh, let's say for example on 31st of December right up to 31st of December and you can see the list of all the checks that are due on those dates will come out
Now, under the other section, this is a section where you do uh, more options for configuring the system. For example, if you have some problem with your data and you try to sort it back, you can use a sorting. You can do a sort and the system will just sort the data and re-index it to rearrange it and see whether it can put back your data in order. If sometimes you have power failure, for example, some portion of the data may be corrupted, a sorting will be a good option to do. Now, you also have administrative tools. Inside administrative tools, we have got system setup. This is where we can configure the system. How does it work? What is the company's registration number and so on? Uh, which is the financial month? What are the documents used and so on? There are a lot of settings here to configure the system. So usually when you install, when we install a system for you, we would ask you what are the things you want. For example, I just now mentioned how many months on the ledger do you wish to print. We can do this and actually change the setting here. And we will configure the system for you. This is more for configuration. There are pages where you can do simple configuration on the system. And under the administrative tools, you have got internet setup. If you are sending out by via email, for example, we will need to set in for you which is your email account, what is your SMTP server, your POP server and so on, how you send your email out for those documents like reminder letters and so on. We need to do a setting here at least once so that you don't have to each time type in your email account to do that. Right? And you can also do user maintenance. Who are the users? This is where the admin person can actually set for this person what is the password and set new users. And under that, each user access right for example, Wong, what can you do under here? If you cannot do any maintenance of general link, we just click, it's dim. Once it's dim, you don't have power to do that option. If you take it again, that means you activate it back. If I dim it this way, or I do, I do it like apply. That's how I can control which user can handle which part of the ACE credit system. So we also have other options like data housekeeping to clear some uh, transactions which may be very old in the system because your data files will get bigger and bigger. So you can actually clear it off, back it up one copy and then do the housekeeping and check size, you can clear historical figures and so on. Now we also have an option for you to export to a tab delimited file all your master details from your creditor system. For example, this, this is meant for import to a third party tool like Excel. So you can export all your creditors, you can choose which account, for example, export to what file name, now, what happens is that all the raw data, such as uh, the suppliers, account number, names, addresses, email, and so on, are exported to a format which can be accepted by the Excel into columnar form. And from there, you can actually do whatever you want to do. Now, while you export, you can also choose which are the features you want to export. You can actually tick and say, I only want to export name and account numbers, for example, or telephone numbers. You can choose and you can save that out into a template. So that next time you want to do re-export again, you don't have to do a choosing again. We have options like this as well. Now the lock screen is an option whereby if I'm a user, I want to lock my screen while I go away for a while so that nobody else touches my system. When I come back, I do an unlock, I enter my password and I'm able to unlock my system. Now change today's date is when you want to change the system state. Uh, perhaps uh, when you move on to the next month, for example, you find that the date is not correct and you want to change it. Now, only the administrator can do this. The last option is to exit, which is the same as this button here. So, this is where you exit the entire system. So, we have come to the end of our presentation on the ACE credit system. Thank you for watching.